Hi, and welcome back to Waveform Science. I'm Jeff Hagen. Tonight we have a bit of a treat. We're going to be going over Bluetti's PS72 power station. This device released on their eBay store about a month ago-ish to no fanfare at all. There was, there was no announcement, nobody knew it was coming out, there was no marketing blitz, nothing. It just showed up for sale. People looked at it and were very confused. Um, trying to figure out, number one, uh, what, <laughs> what is this thing being sold that nobody knows about? There's no specs or anything about it. And two, um, the specs looked very similar to another model, the EB70S, that's been around for a while. So the specs between the two, the EPS72 has a 716 watt hour battery, which is the same as an EB70S. It has a 700 watt inverter, where the EB70S has an 800 watt, so the inverter is a little smaller. The DC side has exactly the same ports, that's interesting. Um, and really the only cosmetic difference on the outside is the number of outlets and the style of flashlight. So what's the deal? Um, well, Bluetti sent me one to do testing on uh, about a month ago, and it takes about that long to actually do the testing. So tonight we're going to have a quickie review uh, going over both products, the EB70S and of course the brand new PS72. And to do that, I have enlisted the help of my evil twin, Blurry. Hi, Blurry. Wave to the people. Blurry had a small accident with an image editing program when he was young, but we're happy with it now. Blurry's going to help me show what comes in the box with the EB70S and compare it to the PS72. So the PS72 comes in the box with a Bluetti T200S power supply, the same power supply that is used to wait on the EB70S. I guess you've got one of those too. Okay, well, no matter. Um, it comes with a uh, uh, DC 7909 to MC4 um, solar cable, which I guess the EB72 also does. Hmm. Um, and in the box, in addition to that, is a um, cigarette lighter to DC 7909 cable, which I guess the EB70S has got one of those too. Hmm. Well, this warrants further study. Let's take a little bit of a deep dive and see what else we can find in there. PS72 weighs 20.3 pounds on my scale, 21.4 pounds in the manual. EB70S weighs 20.7 pounds on my scale, 21.4 pounds in the manual. Going by the manuals, they both have the same weight, which means they would both have the same energy density by weight. The PS72 measures in at a little bit over 12 by about 9-ish by a little bit over 8 inches in that direction. Official specifications are 12.4 by 8.4 by 9.2. The B70S measures a tiny bit, 12 and a half about, about uh, eight and a quarter ish, um, by about eight inches, roughly this direction. Official specifications for EB70S are 12.6 by 8.5 by 8.7. By the official measurements, EB70S has a slightly better energy density by volume being a slightly smaller number of cubic feet with the same capacity as the PS72. Taking a quick look at the connectors on both devices, both PS72 and EB70S have the majority of their ports on the front. They both have a different style of handle. PS72 has two, whereas EB70S has just one. Rotating the device on the side, both devices have fans on the sides. On the rear, PS72 has a diffused style light, whereas EB70S has a spot style light on the front. Opposite side, both devices have a fan. Back around to the front. The controls between the PS72 and the EB70S are nearly identical. PS72 has two buttons on the front and one button on the rear for the light. EB70S has three buttons on the front. P 
PS72, when you press a button, the first time you press it, it turns the screen on. The second time you press it while the screen is on, it turns the actual output on, and a green light turns on. If the screen is timed out and you push a button, on or off, it just turns the screen back on. Pressing the button a second time while the screen is on will toggle the state. On EB70S, the unit does not care if the screen is on or not. Pushing a button at any time will activate or deactivate that particular control, regardless of whether or not the screen is on. Both the PS72 and the EB70S both have a single power input port with exactly the same specifications, 12 to 28 volts DC, 200 watts max, on both devices. And as my evil twin showed earlier, they both come with the same charging brick which means if you have the same power input and you have the same charging brick, they're probably going to charge at the same time, and in fact they do. PS72 took uh, 4 hours and 20 minutes, and EB70S took 4 hours and 13 minutes. Effectively identical. Uh, in addition to that, the uh, solar controllers between the two of them are also effectively identical, uh, with the uh, exception that it looks like they put a little bit of work into the PS72's controller and improved the response at the low end. So it does start charging a little earlier, one volt earlier, but the amount of charging is negligible. So really consider that these two devices really have the same solar controller between the two of them, because that's what you're going to see in the real world with real panels. And this is uh, 12 to 28 volts, uh, just like other Bluetti devices, you do get a volt or so of uh, overhead, and they both cut out to exactly zero at exactly 31 volts. Following the trend, the DC output between the two devices are nearly identical as well. First off, you get two 5 volt, 3 amp USB-A output ports. These are regular single voltage 5 volt ports, and they are not USB quick charge ports. Both devices have them, and they do work. The, each device has two USB power delivery 3.0 100 watt ports. Uh, these actually scope out as USB 3.0 PPS, so the adjustable voltage um, ports. And that's true on both devices, and each port does in fact really deliver 100 watts, even when the other port is also delivering 100 watts. So you get 200 watts total, 100 watts per port, of USB output from this device. And that's true on both devices. You get two DC5521 barrel jacks. These are 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 millimeter DC barrel jacks. Each barrel jack is rated for 5 amps, and you can actually pull 5 amps out of them. They're on the same circuit, and it's 10 amps for the whole circuit. Each device has one cigarette lighter port. And that cigarette lighter port is rated for 10 amps. Uh, and it's on the same circuit as the DC5521 jacks, which means that when you are pulling 10 amps from the cigarette lighter port, you cannot also be pulling 10 amps from the 5521 ports. Where things are a little different between the two devices is the cutoffs. There is a very hard cutoff on the EB70S with the cigarette lighter port. When you get to 10.1 amps, it cuts to zero and shows you a short error. With the PS72, you have a little bit of a grace period until you get to about 10.4 amps, where it then cuts off and gives you a short error. Uh, the cigarette lighter jack itself is only rated for 10 amps, so pulling more than 10 amps through it is eventually going to melt the connector, so it's a good thing that it doesn't let you pull too much. But it is nice that the PS72 has a little bit of a grace period in case you have something with a startup surge, like for example a diesel heater where those devices need a little bit more power to get them going than a cigarette lighter can necessarily deliver, but as long as you don't do that too often, you're not going to wind up melting the connector. The PS72 will help you there a little bit better than the EB70S. Both devices have wireless charging port on top of them, and of course they both work. If you do manage to cause a short error, like this, and clearing it is as simple as push and hold one of the buttons until the alarm goes away. Then push the button again to turn the output back on. I do recommend removing whichever device caused the short to happen before you turn it back on, or it will simply short again as soon as it turns on. But clearing it's relatively easy. Let's shift our focus to the AC side of the device. PS72 has a 700 watt rated inverter. 
EB70S has an 800 watt rated inverter. So EB70S has an inverter rated for 100 watts more than PS72. PS72 has five plugs. EB70S has four plugs. Two of the plugs on EB70S don't have any place to put a ground pin. So those are limited to devices that have two prong outlets. Whereas the PS72, all of the outlets have a place to put a ground pin. Although you can tell these are just, this is just a hole. It's not hooked up to anything. There is no grounding of this device. And not only that, the device's internal grounds are not connected to each other. So whatever is plugged into this port is not going to be grounded to the same ground as whatever is plugged into this port because these two pins don't go anywhere. Not all that uncommon on solar generators. I just want to call it out that that's a thing. Um, let's take a look at how the outlets actually respond when you put a lot of load on them. Let's see what the AC outputs can do. I have an EB70S here cruising along at about 650, 660 watts. It's rated for 800 watts. Let's see what we can get out of it. I'm using a variable AC load here, so I'm slowly turning up the power. Right about at what the maximum is. Let's see if we can go any higher. Just a tiny bit over 800 watts is where we short out. Let's do the same test with the PS72. This one has a 100 watt smaller inverter at 700 watts versus the EB70S's 800 watt inverter. Let's see where this one stops. 770, 800 watts, 825. So interestingly, this one overloads at pretty much exactly the same point as the EB70S, despite having a 100 watt rated smaller inverter. Performing detailed benchmarking of a device can not only tell you how the device will behave under circumstances where you might want to use it, but it also tells you something about the internals of this device when you compare those numbers to the internals of another device. You can now see on each side of the screen a graph for the PS72 and the EB70S for their discharge efficiency. You can tell these are two separate graphs. They're also kind of small and kind of hard to read. I'll fix that in a minute. Um, these graphs were taken, the, the readings for these graphs, were taken over a year apart from each other. My EB70S was benchmarked back when I got it. Oh, you know, about a year ago. The PS72 benchmarks were done this month. And if I put these two graphs together, some interesting things occur. The graphs are pretty much identical. The DC graph and the AC graph, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just the repeatability of experiments. So this tells me a couple of things. One, the EB70S and the PS72 effectively have the same DC circuits. You can even see that drop when it goes from 150 watts down to 200 watts. Yeah, they both have exactly the same characteristic drop. They have exactly the same shape. I mean, it, this is the same circuitry. These are two different devices that were measured over a year apart with different batteries under them. The AC side, same thing. It's the same inverter between these two devices. One of them is rated at 700 watts. The other one is rated at 800 watts. I'm willing to make a bet that this is the same componentry inside. I haven't opened it to look, but I bet you it's pretty much the same. That being said, the EB70S could never actually complete a full discharge at 800 watts. It would conk out and overheat about halfway through. So it really ought to be a 700 watt device for the EB70S because it can't do a full discharge at 800 watts. With the PS72, it looks like they fixed that. They made it be a 700 watt device and it, as you just saw, it can still do 800 watts for short periods of time. But they fixed the expectations because they have an inverter that can do 100% to 0% discharge at 700 watts and they called it a 700 watt device. So kudos on Bluetti for fixing that. So is the PS72 just a rebadged EB70S? And the answer is mostly. 
Uh, there is a couple of improvements. In some cases, it's actually better. Uh, the DC cutoff is better. Um, the AC inverter, as far as I can tell, is the same inverter, but it's rated properly, which isn't a technical differentiation as much as it is a marketing differentiation. They're not advertising it as doing, you know, more than it can really do, which is always a good thing. Um, downsides, of course, uh, this is an older generation device. Um, it charges off a charging brick and takes a four plus hours to do it from dead to full, and there is nothing you can do to get it to charge faster. Uh, it only has one charging input, so it means there's no dual charging. Uh, it doesn't have a UPS mode, um, the, all the charging brick models. There is no offline UPS mode because there's no AC power going in. The AC is being converted to DC in the charging brick first, and then the DC is being passed into the device. Since the device never actually gets AC, there's no way for it to pass that AC through in a uh, UPS mode, so of course it doesn't have one. Um, it doesn't have apps aboard. Um, the EB70S never had it. The PS72, basically a rebadge of it with a few couple of updates, doesn't have app support either. So what is good about it? Well, it is an EB70S, which is still selling and people are still buying them because it's a good device. And it basically is the same device with a couple of updates. So it's an even better device than the EB70S. Uh, and it's cheaper. And I don't usually get too much into price in the technical reviews. But in this particular case, the price is a significant aspect, and we are talking the sub $400 range. So um, very, very inexpensive for this capacity of battery. And as far as I can tell, they're using the same high quality batteries that Bluetti uses everywhere else. So who is this for? Um, Bluetti has had a long history, and, and Max Oak, their, their other brands, um, have had a long history of selling the one generation back device for significant, significant discounts. And now that the AC180 is out, it looks like the EB70S, a la the PS72, is getting the same treatment. So this is gonna be available for, they tell me, a limited amount of time uh, on their eBay stores, and I believe there is also a link on a Walmart store for the same thing. Uh, and it is marked at a very significant discount. So if you're looking for a 700 watt hour device and you're looking for a relatively solid one with technology that has been around for a while and has been trusted, this would be something to look at. If you're looking for the newest and latest and greatest, you really want to be looking at the AC180 in this particular size range. But it is what it is. Let me call out, as always, I am not paid to make these videos. Um, Blue Eddy does not financially compensate me in any way for these. Uh, this is a test device. Um, this one, the PS72, is a test device. The EB70S is a retail unit, but the uh, PS72 is a test device. Uh, that was sent out to me um, right about the same time as this went up on eBay, because if they hadn't sent it to me before it was available to the public, there would be no way I could have finished this level of testing in this amount of time. Uh, we did about... 300-ish uh, hours of testing on both devices in order to generate the discharge graphs. So quite a bit of testing went into these. Um, Blue Eddy has no control whatsoever over what I say. They don't get a copy of the video before it goes public. So you guys can see what I think about it, not anything, anything that anybody's paying me to say. I don't get paid for these. Um, you'll notice the YouTube channel does not have monetization turned on, and I have no plans to do so because I make these not to make money. I make these because these videos are kind of fun to make. And as long as you guys have fun watching them, and I have fun making them, we'll keep having more of these. So, have fun everybody!